Good morning. Good morning to everyone. Magandang araw po sa bawat isa. Today, uh, the Lord has uh, given us this wonderful time and privilege to, to be together and to be able to worship the Lord as a family here at MCBC. Ako rin po ay masayang masaya sapagkat uh, right now, in our midst, ay aming mga dear family from Sacramento and L.A., Mamaya po ay ipapakilala natin sila. Yesterday, we had such a great time. I was so blessed yesterday. And even, uh, when was that? Uh, Friday night. Uh, because uh, Godwin and Lisel they, they uh, renew their uh, marriage vows last, uh, yeah, Friday night. Friday night. So we were together and... If you remember, uh, Mama Isming, we, we've been praying for Mama Isming, yung pong, mad, yung pong aming mom, na nasa Villa Moore, and we've, we've been praying that the Lord will continue to strengthen her and continue to inspire her, her as especially uh, we're, you know, uh, uh, we're together and uh, especially as she experiences uh, uh, this uh, crowning days of her life. Na? Uh, tumatanda na si Mama namin. But at the age of uh, 87, I uh, hindi pa siya alagain. So we're thankful that uh, God is uh, so good. So mamaya, uh, marami po kaming mga pamangkin. Siguro may mga 21 pagka nagsama-sama. And uh, it's so interesting because their ages are basically not really uh, far from, you know, I think the eldest would be somewhere in uh, uh, 20s. Ganyan. So pagka nag-ipon, parang magkakabarkada. So parang malaking uh, tribo ito no ng uh, na magiging uh, uh, pagpapala and we're thankful. The reason why I want to take that as uh, by way of uh, you know introduction because I was so encouraged by the life of my mother-in-law Mrs. Ismenia Castrense. And even when father was still alive when when dad uh, yung pong aking father-in-law Ang kanila pong, uh, their house basically became a house church before. So it started the ministry of uh, uh, Villamore Baptist Church today, started from a garage, just like, you know, uh, this uh, church we started. We remember, okay, that old garage dun sa Ay Mendoza. So s- somehow, God has, been, God has been using people who are like-minded and uh, from whatever they had before, and they would put up like, um, you know, a, a small uh, gathering, and then eventually uh, those small gatherings uh, became local churches. So we thank the Lord for that. And uh, I still remember, no? Um, when we were small, we were playing uh, marbles, jolens, alam nyo ba yun? No? Sa, sa silong, no? So, and... You know, God has used so many pastors and workers. And every time I visit Villamore, I was, I was so blessed, you know, from those beginnings. And I told, I told Mama, Sabi ko, Ma, God has used you a number of times to be an encouragement to many pastors and Christian workers. Alam niyo, parang katulad halimbawa ni Ate Glenn. Or is Ate Glenn? Ate Glenn, are you there? Pag may workers tayo, whenever we have practical workers from uh, CBS, we would always think of Ate Glenn. Ikaw bahala sa inyo titira. Pero ngayon, syempre, it so happened na ating practical worker, our practical worker right now, this semester, is uh, a gentleman. So it's hard for, for John, you know, to stay with the... Uh, with uh, Ate Glenn and uh, Keisha, sapagat sila mga ladies, no? But, uh, just like that. So, a number of pastors in the past, and Christian workers, mga babae, dun sa bahay, lalaki babae, uh, ladies and gentlemen, they can, you know, just go there and have such a, um, such a wonderful time being at home, uh, especially during weekends, and uh, experience, uh, a kind of hospitality. Si Mama, magaling magluto, okay? 
magaling uh, ang tawag ay magaling dumilihan siya ng mga luto no kaya doon ako natuto okay through mama i learned to eat dining ding because you know i'm ilonggo okay i'm coming from ilonggo or uh, from the uh, ilonggo tribe my my parents my parents are from gimaras okay but then when you know uh, mama would would offer dining ding pinakbet so It turned out to be a very wonderful time together. So encouragement. Encouragement. Life is full of complexities. This life is very messy. This life is very challenging. I know today, each one of us, we have come here with a heart loaded with, you know, with probably with discouragement. And God knows. And God sees us through and through. And He understands what we're going through. And so as a body of Christ, God is giving us this opportunity because we're made in the image of God. Imagine, we're, we're image bearers. Tayo po ay image bearers. Okay? Tayo po ay nag-reflect. We reflect the image of God. Okay? So when we say, you and I were made in the image of God, what do we mean by that? We reflect, just like a reflector. You know, when, that, when, when a light you know, shines on me, being a reflector, I pass that light to others. So the idea of encouragement is so important from the biblical perspective. We started, you know, two Sundays ago. And we talked about this. Elder last time talked about what is a caring spirit. I talked about the first time. Ano ang critical na spirito? Ano yung spirito na uh, kritiko na parang ang gusto mong parate ay marami kang nakikita. You can see a lot of faults and in a way, we end up like fault finders. What is a critical spirit? We talked about it the first You know, the first time and the second time last Sunday, Elder delivered a very important message on what is a caring spirit. So as we move on today, we're talking about what is encouragement. And if you remember the life of Job, Job had friends. Well, God has given us friends. Thank God for our friends. We have, from, we, we ha- we have friends from different uh, ages. Meron tayong kaibigan from our, from our school. We have friends, our neighbor friends, our friends from, um, um, you know, different groups. Or, for example, if you are taking a, a particular class, you can have, you know, you can develop a friend from that, from that guild or from that class. We can have a lot of friends. In fact, today, people would just settle on Okay na sa akin, basat marami akong Facebook friends. Ba? Paramihan ba ito ng Facebook friends? Yan. So yung iba, hindi na tumatanggap ng Facebook friends sapagkat they have reached the limit of a certain number. So you can just follow me or you can just follow somebody. So mga kapatid, this is not about you know, having a lot of friends from, from uh, Facebook or virtual reality, but God wants us to have friends that would be, okay, a source of encouragement. So today, let me ask you, do you have a friend who encourages you to be like the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you have a friend who encourages you to be closer to the Lord and, uh, you know, to someone who goes alongside with you? Now, when Fanny Crosby, Fanny Crosby, she was the one who composed the song, Uh, to God be the glory at six weeks old one of the songs to God be the glory I think I remember uh, another song would be all the way my Savior leads me another song would be uh, praise him praise him Fanny Crosby when she was six weeks old she became blind imagine at six weeks old she became blind it was the start of a life that you know would probably a life of discouragement But you know what? Because of the godly friends, friends who could see, those friends have become eyes for Fanny Crosby. And then eventually Fanny Crosby even went to school and she was able to compose more than 4,000 hymns. And many of those hymns are our favorites today. So just imagine every time I sing, All the way my Savior leads me. Can I doubt? 
His tender mercies, who through life has been my guide. Imagine the power of that song. And there was a time when she was called onto the stage to play. She was a, a magnificent piano player. She said, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is so great to see you all. And you know what? Everybody was like, they had teary eyes. Why? Because of Fanny Crosby's life. People encouraged her so much. And now, in the midst of difficulty, in the midst of this limitation, no sight. Bulag, imagine. And yet, she was able to impact so many people, even today, because of her legacy. Encouragement. We remember last time about the life of Job from the Old Testament. And perhaps Job was one of the patriarchs, according to some biblical scholars. So he could be lined up with you know, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Moses, and even, and even Job. So after the friends of Job had spoken, okay, because they came, and they saw Job, his own plight and his, his situation, and three of his friends, I think, yeah, three, some would say that they were just representatives, but Job's friends take turn, they took turn one after the other and offered their advice. And one of the advices is this, Job, Job, you know what? You have sinned before God. And so Job, you have to repent. Job, alam mo, ang sama mo kasi sa Tagalog. Ang sama mo kasi, alam mo, talagang ikaw ay talagang dapat sa iyan. So just imagine, these people came from what? Came from, okay, probably from the East, that kilala sa wisdom, they, they are known for wisdom, and so on. But when they came, and when they started speaking, and uttering their words, those words were hurtful. Those words were discouraging. So imagine, you know, uh, Eli, okay, Eli, Bildad, and, uh, and, uh, was the other one? Um, uh, I think so far, yeah? So these friends, they thought that they were doing service, okay, to their friend Job. When they uttered their words, their words were like, you know, stubbing the heart of Job. And particularly in Job 6. If you would turn to Job 6, okay, Job Chapter 6. Imagine you have friends who have come, you know, from distant places, and they have come just to encourage you, but all along they were, you know, hurting Job so much. Job, look at chapter 6, verse 15. It says here, Job. 615 my brothers have dealt deceitfully like a brook like the streams of the brooks that pass away so that was the language in other words my brothers are are undependable as intermittent streams according to one version parang sila uh, pabago-bago they are like intermittent streams as the streams that overflow Imagine ito pong salita, these are the words of Job. After Eli's speech, after, you know, those things about, you know, trying to understand and trying to, um, trying to address the situation of Job. And then Job's response was, parang silay, okay, walang, walang tibay na maasahan. My brothers are as undependable as intermittent streams, as the streams that overflow. So Job laments. Talagang Job was lamenting and, and he was crying. His friends increase his burden all the more. Imagine you have friends, yes. But sometimes our friends would increase our burden, our, our hurts all the more. Nakarana sa bakay ng ganito mga kaibigan minsan. You thought all the while, na sila mga friends. And sometimes you thought, Siya pa naman ay nasa church. Siya pa naman, you know, that person is coming from, from our church, a fellow church member and so on. But sometimes when he or she speaks, 
that person increases my burden and my, my anguishing and my, my hurt. So imagine. Now, he further responds. Look at verse 21, the same chapter. Look at verse 21. For now you are nothing. You see terror, okay, and are afraid. In other words, now you too have proved, okay, chapter 6, verse 21, okay. Other version would say, now you too have proved to be of no help. You see something dreadful and are afraid. So what you see is always negative, Job was somewhat saying. So in truth, we find here, through the earliest years of Job's struggle, According to the Bible, he was such an upright person. One who fears God. And then, out of nowhere, God in his providence, God in his sovereignty, God in his wise counsel, God tested Job for a purpose. We know that. And then friends came and they were trying to tell Job about his situation. Encouragement. All the more, the more, you know, the more we stay here on earth, the more we experience discouragements. Words are very hurtful. And that's why I was, I was telling uh, our layman's class this morning, we should always remember that when we study the Bible, God is not in the habit of blessing empty minds. God is not in the habit of blessing empty minds. If, if you want to be a blessing to others, if I want... To be a blessing to others, I should always remember that, Lord, if I want this kind of life, if I want to be an encouragement to others, Lord, you won't, you won't allow it to happen unless I know you. I know who you are, not just about you, but I know you and I know your word, right? So this is how God would want to work in our lives. There was a story of a little boy, of course, when, when kids would learn to write, they would, they would allow their hearts, you know, to call out their mommy and daddy. Like, mommy, look what I drew, okay? Tinan mo ko sinulat ko, di ba? So, and then, of course, sometimes, mommy would say, okay, that's good. Okay, sometimes hindi pinapansin. But just imagine, you know, that little boy or girl would say, mommy, look what I drew. When we were learning to swim or play basketball or, you know, do our sports, remember that? Remember you my kids that when they play instruments, they would say, I can play instrument. Well, that's good, son. That's good, uh, child. And then they would feel so encouraged. Look me here. Look at me, dad, mom. So they, they could be encouraged because of, you know, what we do and what we say. So just as children... Just as children need encouragement, I think even adults today, adults need encouragement too. And probably all the more. Tayo mga matatanda, okay? Tayo mga matatanda. But not just occasionally, of course, but it should be a regular thing. And that's why, let's turn to the book of Hebrews in the New Testament. Hebrews chapter 3. Okay, I like this verse. So, and then as you're turning to that uh, portion uh, this morning, uh, one of the applications that we made as far as doing Bible study is that you need to make sure that you are a believer. You need to make sure that you are a believer. Sigurado ka when it comes to your salvation. And then I ask the question, why is it so important to know that each one of us is a genuine believer? Why? And you know what? Certain answers were absolutely, okay, right on target. And they said, Pastor, so that hindi masasayang, hindi mauwi sa wala, and then hindi magkakaroon ng tinatawag na uh, ang ating status ay maliwanag, that we are believers and we know, we know the Word and we can see ourselves and at the same time, God. And I said, that's right. So when we try to encourage one another, it begins from a life that is changed by God. If you would turn uh, to Hebrews chapter 3, there's a section there. <clears throat> the context is about we need to be faithful because in the ancient, in the ancient past, there was this heart hardened by unbelief. 
you know, this world is full of, you know, skepticism. Ibig sabihin ng mga tao, we tend to be cynical because, you know, life is so hard, life is so difficult, and then what we, what we want, what we need today is something that is based on our sense experience or our sensory data, what we feel, what we see, what we hear. So we, ha- we had all our needs confined to those things, and yet, according to the author of Hebrews, he says, we need to remember the past. Because the past, they had this heart of unbelief. According to verse um, 7, to the, Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says today, If you will hear His voice, do not harden your hearts, as in the provocation, as in the rebellion, in the day of trial in the wilderness, where your fathers tested me and tried me and saw my works forty years. Therefore, I was angry with that generation. You see, because of their heart. And then, look at verse 12. Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. So when you have your own way and depart from God, you have that unbelief because you don't believe God anymore. And then it says, verse 13, but, you see, it is a strong adversity. Uh, after you know, all these dangers, it says, but, the top what ang sabi, subalit ang sabi, exhort one another daily. So this is the language of encouragement, okay, uh, for us. We need to encourage one another every day. Pastor, we're not seeing every day naman. It's not the point. But every day you can, you, you can encourage your parents. Children, you can encourage your parents. You can encourage your, your brothers or your sisters. Or you can encourage somebody, somebody in your family who is not yet a believer. An encouragement is a life that is governed by God because of what we believe to be true. So here, encourage one another daily. I have two points here. First, encouragement involves one person inspiring another person with comfort so when you inspire another person it should be with comfort with words counsel and confidence okay so i want you to remember those words starting with c okay we need to inspire another person with comfort counsel and confidence okay Say it again. Say it with me. Three those, uh, those three words. Okay? Ready? Begin. Comfort, counsel, confidence. Each one of us should inspire one another by doing this. Anion? We want, okay, to inspire my fellow uh, brother, my fellow sister in Christ with comfort, counsel, and confidence. In fact, the very word encourage literally means to cause another to be confident. I was asking Deacon Mani the other day. Huh? Deacon Mani, do you remember? We are talking about how can you translate uh, encouragement into Tagalog? Oh, ba tayo mga Tagalog, no? Baka alam na ating mga Amerikano nga bisita, no? What is encouragement in Tagalog? Yeah. They can speak a bit, no? Uh, uh, few Tagalog. Pero... Paano mo itatagalog ang encouragement? How would you put encouragement into Tagalog? Diba? Paano? Well, Deacon Manny suggested, or we talked, sabi ko, Deacon Manny, it's hard. O nga, Pastor, it's hard. Pero, a word came to our minds, and then we said, pagpapalakas. When you encourage, you know, a person, it means, you know, that person is being strengthened, siya ay napapalakas. Okay? Siya ay napapalakas. And uh, I, was, uh, I was so blessed when Empoy, you know, led the uh, graduation ceremony uh, last Sunday afternoon. Okay? And then you talked about, you know, on YouTube, nakita natin, you know, this uh, athlete, you know, who had a problem along the way. And then remember that? And his father came. And then remember the, the scene? And then that athlete said, I want to continue. And the father, imagine the father, you know, run with him slowly but surely. And that very, until the finish line. And that idea basically was encouragement. 
to go alongside, you know, his son. So going alongside his son till the finish line was a picture or is a picture of encouragement. So, beloved in the Lord, to encourage, encouragement involves one person inspiring another person with comfort, counsel, comfort. Are our words comforting? Yung bang mga words natin ay comforting? When you talk to someone, for example, it's like most, you know, Sundays, this is basically the time that we meet and have fellowship with one another. So, ngayon mo lang siya nakita, perhaps for so many or for so long a time, after, after uh, ilang araw or na-miss mo siya nung nakalipas na Sunday, are our words comforting when we talk to that person? Especially, we don't know what everybody is up to. Hindi yeah, alam eh. Tapos biglang, oh, kamusta? Nagpakita ka pa. <laughs> Mabigat siya, no? Hi, hi, sister. Nagpakita ka pa. Okay. Wow, hallelujah, you, you showed up today. Di ba? Mabigat yun. So dapat, hi, brad, oh, sister, namiss ka namin, namiss kita. Yan, yan ang mga words. So, namiss ka namin, alam mo, uh, naalala kita kasi I know that uh, you told me, you know, you've been going through uh, a lot, ganito. Yan ang maganda. Okay? Hello, kapatid, kaibigan, how are you today? Are we providing comfort? Again, basically, the work of encouragement, and I tell you this, and this is biblical, this is quite deep, but think with me. Encouragement, okay, comes from the very work of the Holy Spirit as the parakletos. The parakletos is what? Parakletos, one of the names of the Holy Spirit. In other words, one who comforts, a comforter. The Holy Spirit, okay, is our comforter. Remember when Jesus said, I will go back to my Father, but I will but I won't leave you comfortless. And so the Holy Spirit came, and the Holy Spirit is our parakletos. So that's the name. Parakaleo, okay, is to go alongside. So from that idea, we go alongside, okay, one another, ang isang encourager, okay, tara, sama tayo, sasamahan kita, pagsama, Pagpapalakas, okay? Ano pa? Uh, when you remain with somebody, okay? Di ba minsan? Kasama natin ang bawat isa sa ating paglago. It's so great to experience, you know, this life. When we travel this life, we know that there will be rough times and difficult times. And yet, when we know that somebody goes alongside us and then providing comfort, and counsel. Counsel is really important. When we counsel one another, we want to set our minds on certain things. For example, I counsel a person. Alam nyo? I was surprised yesterday when we were on our way home. One of the leaders of one particular church, and I was quite, you know, I was, I was quite uh, affected. Pastor, can we meet? Pastor, we want your advice. Pastor won't be, won't be around and the leaders, but just us. Can we meet? So I could sense that, you know, that group is going through some difficulties. So I said, ah, ganun ba? Okay, uh, ano kaya? So I decided, sabi ko, sige, from 2 to 4, we'll see you. Okay lang ba na malapit na lang dito kasi nasa Marikina ako? And they said, Pastor, by all means, we want to go there because we want to get counsel from you. So probably a number of leaders from one particular church would want to meet up with me. Well, here's the point. To counsel, okay, is to set, okay, for example, if this is, if this is your mind, okay, if this is your mind, to counsel is to set your mind on the truths of God. To place your mind, okay? That's the idea. To counsel is to place your mind on the Word of God. To set your mind, the Bible says, set your mind on things above. Set your heart on things above. To comfort, to counsel, and confidence. When you go alongside, okay? You know, that person, your friend or anybody. 
you are providing lakas ng loob, confidence. Dito nagsisimula ang tiwala sa sarili. This is where confidence, confidence starts from the fact that God is in control of everything. That God is here. God is alive. God is in full control. And so, when you set that truth on the mind, or when you know, your, your friend's mind would focus and linger on that, then that person becomes more confident in his life. Talaga? This is so real. I know many of us have gone through a lot. But w- when somebody talked to us about life and then how God has used a number of people and situations and how God has brought us okay, to where we are right now. But before, you're talking to that person. Right now, you're talking to that person's the present moment, which is your before, which is your yesterday. Now you can talk to that person with all of your heart. It's interesting because the prefix, the prefix N from the word encouragement means to cause to be. Encourage means confidence. So when a person is encouraged, that person, okay, is basically, you have caused that person to be confident. The encourager causes others to have confidence to do what needs to be done and to make needed changes. So, do you have friends like this who are encouragers? One time, I had my professor, and uh, I don't know where, he, where she got this word. Um, she told us that uh, this time, we're going to have certain award. And the award was called the Jimper Award. G-I-M-P-E-R. And Jimper means one who excels. I slang or what? But one who excels, one who exhibits excellence or virtues in life. So imagine God knows what we're going through and He knows our need. He knows our struggles in life. God causes us to be confident in this life that God who has promised us in Hebrews chapter 13 that He will never leave us. Remember, God is the greatest encourager. The Holy Spirit is. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. God worded it in the most powerful way. Double negatives. Ang sabi ng God, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Your life must be characterized by what? Contentment in life. And so mga kapatid, whenever we experience burdens in life, and sometimes we, we get so overcome and we get so burdened so much and we feel like, uh, you know, this is the end of it. But no, God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Let your life be without hypocrisy. You can live a life of confidence. You can live a life of contentment. Why? Because he who has promised, I will never leave you nor forsake you, continues to be our God today. Alam nyo ba, if you trace that promise from Hebrews 13.5, that promise was actually given to his specific people, not for everybody. Okay? Think about that. The promise... When God said, even from Moses, from Joshua, and to all the saints, when God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you, it was spoken to a specific audience. Sino yun? God's people. Hindi niya po yun sinabi. God did not, you know, utter those words for the rest of mankind. No, but for a specific purpose, for to a specific people. So the Lord encouraged Joshua here to be strong and very courageous. Imagine, that's the idea here. When a person is encouraged, you are wanting him to be strong and very courageous in leading the Israelites to inherit the land. The land God promised to give them in Joshua 1, 7 to 8. 
Just imagine when they were told, you will possess the land. It was a difficult task. And I think the Hebrew perspective of this promise was, or of this uh, uh, purpose that they will possess the land is this. To possess the land is to dispossess the land. To possess the land, parang Lord, Lord, wag na lang. Ipopossess pala namin, but we will dispossess the land. Because inside the land, flowing with milk and honey, but at the same time, ang daming mga parasites, ando na mga Jebusites, ando yung mga Amalekites, ando yung mga Canaanites, and lahat ng parasites, all kinds of parasites were there. And so, when they would possess the land, they would dispossess it. Why? Because they would make a testimony for the living God of Israel. So imagine the task, and they would probably say, Lord, just leave us here from the, from the plains of Moab. We will not go there and possess the land anymore. Remember the spies? And what the spies saw was like, men were like grasshoppers, and they were like giants. How can we ever possess the land? But God said, be courageous. I will never leave you, nor forsake you. Minsan sa buhay, Kaya mo ba ang buhay ngayon? Pastor, kinakaya ko po. Ayan, medyo, pag may nagsabing kinakaya ko po, alalayan na natin at once. Medyo mabigat na yun pag sinabing kinakaya ko po. Well, lahat naman tayo kinakaya, but at the same time, it will be an encouragement for that person, you know, for you and me to go alongside him or her. So here, the Lord encouraged Joshua to be strong and very courageous in leading the Israelites. The Bible says we should all be encouragers. 1 Thessalonians 5.11 is another passage, important one. Encourage one another and build each other up. We're not to build each other down, but up. So tingnan nyo. And I thank the Lord this coming September, this coming September will be our 32nd, tama ba? 32nd, ba? 32nd anniversary. Parang kaya na 32nd. And thank God, because we're still here. And dito pa tayo. You know why? Because of each and everybody's part of encouraging one another. Mga kapatid, this is a solemn responsibility. This is a solemn task for you and for me to be an encourage, encouragement. Remember, to encourage or encouragement involves one person inspiring another person with comfort, okay? Comfort, counsel, and confidence. So ito magandang isipin natin parati. Lord, I have so many friends. Am I providing comfort, counsel, and confidence? Lord, maganda itong tanongin, no? Kunyari, may, may close, meron kang close na close na friend at sabi mo, am I, am, I, am I providing comfort with you, friend? Or am I uh, giving you counsel that you need? Am I, am I making you confident? So not only that, not only encouragement involves one person inspiring, but at the same time, the second thing is encouragement literally means Calling to one's aid. Encouragement means calling to one's aid. Ito nabanggit ko na kanina, pero uh, I, I just want to emphasize all the more. Calling, okay, calling to one's aid. In other words, parang ikaw ay nagiging aid. Kaya alam nyo, ito ah, ang salitang alalay ay hindi masama. Ah, pag sinabing, uh, Pastor, ako ay may dalawang alalay. Ang ibig sabihin ng alalay ay, okay, they're actually, okay, on your aid. Pag sinabing alalay, hindi yung parang bodyguard, no? Hindi lang yun. Hindi lang bodyguard. Pastor, ako walang alalay. Okay? Ako'y dakilang, is, nag-iisa lang. No! Pag sinabing alalay, eto yung mga friends, eto yung mga, eto yung mga kaibigan natin, that they are what? They're coming to our aid to give, to give comfort or, or counsel. We are called to come alongside and comfort others. We're coming to everybody's aid, and, and sometimes we even go further. 
Alam niyo kahapon, I was talking to uh, isang uh, sister in Luko at natutuwa ako dahil ang mga believers, you know, so sa context naman doon sa Laguna. And then she was telling me, Pastor, you know what? Uh, we have a member and uh, his son ay uh, kinulong at kinakailangan ng uh, ibibail dahil uh, akala daw eh, nag, nag, ano lang, nag uh, rob lang. Pero yung pala, nahulihan ng marijuana. So yung aking, mother, uh, yung aking sister-in-law ang sabi niya, but Pastor, you know what? I gave an amount. Pero syempre, hindi ko naman, kaka- hindi ko naman kakayanin. Lahat ako. And I said, true. Pero ang sabi niya, Pastor, how can we bring that up to the church? Pa, paano may bring up sa church yun when the case is about nahulihan ng marijuana? Because yun, anak ng isang miyembro. So ang sabi ko, uh, ate, I, I, I'm not sure what to say. Ang sabi ko, but you did the right thing. You encouraged the, the, the mother. And you even gave already an amount. Kasi nababurden, ang sabi niya, paano to pastor? Am I going to do this just by myself? Ang sabi ko, no, no, hindi naman. So you can, ang sabi, na lang na, ang sabi ko na lang, you can actually talk to your friends, but not in front of the church and say, tulungan natin ganito, nahulihan ng mariwana, mabigat yun. Di ba? So maganda rin na makalearn yung batang yon, Okay? And then, kung sino man siguro gusto tumulong, dahil nga, it's hard. It's hard to come to one's aid when you know that that person did the wrong thing. O kaya nagkamali siya, o kaya nag, hindi siya nagkasala siya. Paano, paano ipapakita encouragement sa isang taong nagkamali, no? na talagang matigas ang ulo? Pero mga, mga kapatid, we are not, to, we are not to, to stop. I think God gives us wisdom to handle those things. The Father... Okay, let's turn to John 14, verse 16. And let me close with these uh, verses. John chapter 14. This is the section about the Holy Spirit in the Gospel of John. John chapter 14 and verse 16. John chapter 14, verse 16. It says here, And I will pray the Father, and He will give you another helper. Now, let me pause for a while. Another helper. In Tagalog, another is what? Isa pa? O kaya ibang helper. But it's interesting because the word helper here in the original Greek is so important. Na hindi natin masyado nakita. Another is basically the same of its kind, not different of its kind. So, pag sinabing another, ah, uh, oh, sige, bigyan kita ng uh, ibang kasama. Sino po yun? Pusto, tatakot ako, baka mamaya. Ah, iba. Ibig sabihin, na iibahan ka, or you feel like, para bang, uh, you're afraid, kasi hindi mo kilala yung kasama. But mga kapatid, the very idea here of another helper is the same of its kind and it talks about God, the Holy Spirit. What a profound sense. Okay? Christ is talking to his disciples and Christ is saying, I'm going back to the Father, but I will give you another comforter. Another means the same of its kind. God is producing in, in our midst comforters, encouragers, the same of its kind. Ibig sabihin, yung bang marunong mag-encourage, humble, dependable, hindi yung, di ba, pag nagsalita, nakaka-offend, nakaka-stumble, careless, tactless, yan, eto minsan yung salita. Alam mo minsan, hindi natin alam nagiging tactless tayo. Ayan. So may this be a reminder to all of us. When we become tactless, ano ibig sabihin ng tactless? Ibig sabihin, nawawala ang ating poise when it comes to, you know, what is becoming and what is important. Hindi tayo nagiging encouragement. Let's put it that way. 
when a person is a tactless person, hindi na siya nagiging encouragement. You see? Kaya minsan, pag nagsalita, parang iba. Minsan naranasan niyo yun, but pagka na siya nagsalita, iba. Pero pagka siya, ang ganda. Ano na? May, may, may ganun eh. But parehas na, ba, bakit pag siya parang iba ang dating? Aba may dating, no? Pero pag siya, talagang, pastor, alam mo talagang, home run na home run sa puso ko. Ayun. Mga minamahal, that is very important. And sometimes, ang ating intensyon ay maayos, ang ating iniisip ay okay, pero the way we deliver the goods, the way we bring the goods to others, minsan, okay, kinakailangan pa nating matuto. Pero here's the point, ang sabi dito, the Father will give you another, the same of its kind. Kaya disciples, don't you be afraid because you will, I, will, I won't leave you comfortless, another comforter will come, and that is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will teach you into all things. And whatever I have taught you, the Holy Spirit will bring into your minds and remembrances. What a very important thing. And then the last passage, chapter 14 again, look at, look at uh, verses 26 and 27. Same chapter. And let me close with this. It says, Peace I live with you, my peace I give to you, not as the word gives, do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Okay? And sabi ng verse 27, yeah. Peace I live with you, my peace I give unto you. In other words, the peace that comes from the Lord Jesus Christ is all about, okay? His own character and the peace that passes all understanding. I always say, naalala ko noon, when I was a follower of John Lennon, well, ngayon na-appreciate ko, pero hindi katulad nun dati, na talagang, di ba, talagang sumasaludo ka, John Lennon. Okay? The, the London boys were saying, Let, let's give peace a chance. All we are saying, let's give peace a chance. Pero mga kapatid, we're not trying to give peace because we're not able to give peace in reality. But according to the Bible, God, through the Holy Spirit, will give us the peace that passes all understanding. The Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, shall teach you all things. Let not your heart be troubled, and sabi in John 14. Neither let it be afraid, because the encouragement will continue to be yours. And that is through the person and the work of the Holy Spirit. Now this morning, as we travel here below as we continue our life here on earth. Are you living a life of encouragement? Nakaka-encourage ba tayo? Ang buhay ba natin ay nakaka-encourage sa iba? Alam nyo, na-encourage ang mga tao sa atin, even to the point of saying, ano bang meron ka? Bakit ka ganyan? Ba, ba? Ibang klase? Bakit? Bakit? Sa kabila ng lahat and uh, you know, in the midst of all these troubles in your life, you remain to be happy. Not only happy, but you remain to have joy in life. And then you begin to witness, you begin to share the, the real story of the gospel and how the gospel has changed your life and how God is working in your life. Maybe. Because of the way we live, people are encouraged and even people are brought to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mga minamahal, many of us were brought to the saving knowledge of Christ because of encouragement. Tama? Yeah. Somebody encouraged me. I heard that special number that was so wonderful. I was so blessed and I got so encouraged and fired up and talagang I have... I have surrendered my life to the Lord and said, Lord, may you be my Lord and Savior. Remember how God has used people and how, how God encouraged us to become His people. So, mga kapatid, today as we close, we pray that this life will be a life in, of encouragement, not discouragement. Mas maganda na ang buhay natin ay nakafocus kay Kristo. Ang sabi nga natin, our eyes on Christ, we can live a life of, 
blessing. Oh. Tinayin po. My thoughts are not always true. Huh? Your thoughts are not always true. Okay, beloved? You're not always right. Your thoughts are not always true. My thoughts are not always... Hindi tayo parating tama. Ah, yung iba. Kasi siya lang tama eh. Parating tama eh. May tama siya. Hindi mo siguro may tama. No? Pero siya na lang parating may ta- Siya na lang parating tama, tama. No? Pero mga kapatid, let's confess before God, our thoughts are not necessarily true. But here's the point. But when our thoughts are true, when our thoughts are true, it is by virtue of the one, Jesus Christ, who has saved us and encouraged us to move on and continue this life in the midst of difficulty. Tama po ba? But ka naging encouragement sa iba? Kapatid, dahil lamang kay Kristo. It is because of Christ. Beloved, let us be encouragers, not discouragers. Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you, Lord, for this blessed day. Thank you for the way you have spoken to us and the way you have provided us with a lot to chew on and especially on the subject of encouragement. Lord, I pray for all the parents here, for all the children, and for all of us. May we be encouragers for your glory and honor. In Jesus' name.